Yahya Bello honors EFCC invitation over alleged 80.2 billion naira fraud. PDP Governor's Forum reaffirms support for Fubara, opposed return of chairmanship to North Central. Abuja teachers resume suspended strike due to unpaid wages. On the foreign scene, situation under control after a Bamako attack by Al-Qaeda affiliate. Good afternoon and welcome to the news update on Trust Television. I am Aisha Salihu. Thank you for joining us. The news in detail. A former governor of Kogi State, Yahya Bello, has honored an invitation by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. His media office confirmed on Wednesday. A statement signed by the director of the media of the Yahya Bello Media Office, Oyare Michael, says Bello's decision to appear before the anti-graft agency comes after consultations with his family, legal team and political associates. Bello was said to have been accompanied to the EFCC headquarters by several high-profile Nigerians. The former governor has been in a running battle with the anti-graft agency over alleged financial impropriety while he was the number one citizen of Kogi State. He and three others are facing 19 counts related to money laundering to the tune of 80.2 billion naira. The statement disclosed that the former governor personally engaged with the EFCC to clear his name, stating he has nothing to hide and nothing to fear. Bochi State Governor and Chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, Bala Mohammed, has announced that a forum is collaborating with the acting national chairman of the party and other members of the National Working Committee to facilitate the return of the national chairmanship to the North Central. Bello disclosed this on Tuesday while addressing journalists in Bauchi after a meeting with NWC members led by National Legal Advisor Kamaluddin Ajibade. He said the fact that the North East is currently acting as the national chairman is a constitutional aberration. As according to the party's constitution, any vacancy in a leadership position should be filled by the region from which it was originally created. The acting national chairman, Ambassador Umar Damagun, told Weekend Trust, a sister publication of Daily Trust, in an exclusive interview last week, that while he was not desperate, to return the, seat, the chairmanship, there was nothing in the constitution that mandated the position to remain in the North Central. We discussed extensively the need for collaboration between the Nigerian Governors Forum, the PDP Governors Forum, and the National Working Committee, so that some of the issues that result in the litigation, issues that cannot be resolved will be resolved on the table. It is along this line that we collectively agreed the need for root of law. And the delegation gave their firm commitment or support to the position of the Nigerian Governors Forum, PDP, on River State, where we have an established practice in which any governor in any state that is coming from the party, is the leader of the party, and will therefore have the structure of the party for sustainability. Meanwhile, the National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party has endorsed River State Governor Semina Lai Fubara as a leader of the party in this state. The delegation, led by the legal advisor of the party, Kamaluddin Ajibade Adeyemi, senior advocate of Nigeria, stated this during a closed-door meeting lasting about three hours at the government house in Bochi. The chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, Bala Mohammed, who presided over the meeting, said no party member can be in the PDP and at the same time be in the APC. Bala added that deliberations at the meeting focused on resolving many issues of concern in the party at the national level and reshaping the core values of good governance and respect for the rule of law. The
noted that the delegation of the NWC gave the full support of the position of the Governor's Forum on River State Crisis, that the Governor remained the substantive leader of the party. We collectively agreed the need for rule of law. The delegation gave their firm commitment or support to the position of the Nigerian Governors Forum, PDP, on River State, where we have an established practice in which any governor in any state that is coming from the party is the leader of the party and would therefore have the structure of the party for sustainability. That commitment on behalf of the Governors Forum, we are very grateful to the uh, National Working Committee, heavily led by the legal advisor. Residents of Kaduna Metropolis are still groaning over the unstable price of petrol at the various stations across the state, as well as the scarcity of the product, which is affecting economic activities in the state. The situation, which is also affecting commercial transport operators, is also forcing commuters in the metropolis to seek for other alternatives to save costs. Trustee Vizbella Musa went round the metropolis and sent in this report. The situation is negatively affecting the movements of goods and services, which in turn is crippling commercial activities in Kaduna State. Motorists who cannot afford buying from black market operators are spending man hours in long queues across the metropolis. So the price of a liter here is 939 naira, and this morning I bought a liter at another filling station at the rate of 1150 naira. In other places, it is sold at 1,250 naira and 1,300. According to tricycle owners and commercial bus drivers, the situation is posing a threat to the survival of their businesses. Before, we used to pay 2,000 naira as proceeds to the owners of the tricycles, but it has been increased to 3,500 naira per day. And for you to meet up this new rate, you must buy fuel of 12,000 naira. In a day, you will make 17,000 naira, and you spend 12,000 naira on petrol, and you give the owner 3,500 naira, then you are left with almost nothing. In the morning, I bought a liter at the rate of 1,150 naira and made 2,000 naira from the quantity. And now I am here to buy fuel again because you can't fill the tank due to cost. We are suffering because from Maraba to Kao is now 400 naira. And in most cases, passengers insisted on 3,500 naira. Today, I bought fuel of 15,000 naira, and this is just what I got. And I'm using it to buy another fuel. Alak Ili Road and Ahmadi Bellui are the busiest roads in Kaduna Metropolis. However, Vehicular movement is reducing on the road due to cost of fuel, with many residents resulting to trekking to reach their destinations. There is high fuel price, which has destabilized the preparation. So, honestly speaking, even today I had to walk down to my office, me myself, talk less of transporting my children to school, because buying fuel at at such exorbitant price, we can't afford it. Nigerians are still hoping that the commencement of operation of Angote refinery will bring soccer to Nigerians. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Similarly, the recent increase in fuel prices across the country has forced many private car owners to park their cars and switch to public transportation.
in Lagos State. Many private car owners, particularly those whose businesses are on the island, have turned to public transport services while ride-hailing companies are now sticking to specific routes, as many of their customers can no longer afford the increased fares. Victoria Tokolo pre sent this report as presented from our studio. The recent surge in fuel prices across the country has left many citizens grappling with the rising costs of commuting, forcing them to adopt new strategies to cope. This is the case in Lagos as petrol prices have now exceeded 950 naira per liter at NPC filling stations and reaching as high up to 1,200, 1,300 at other retail outlets, causing the financial strain to be felt across all sectors. Ride hailing companies have been skeptical about the use of air conditioning during trips as well as accepting long trips due to the increase in fuel prices. And I normally go out with my car and wind down properly. Like other motorists, they normally wind up. They, they normally wind down. Many people are no longer using the AC on their various cars. So the situation is very critical. The situation is very critical as of now, as I'm talking to you. So people are no longer owning AC in their car. Before, I used to go to mainland very well. But for now, as of now, I cannot go to mainland as usual before. So... Rather, if I want to pick something on me in mainland, I will prefer to enter a public transport box. Then I cannot even run the AC as usual as before now. Um, before I buy for, if I want to go to like, if I want to go to mainland and in Ekpe or Aja before, I will buy for like 3,000, 4,000. But now it's about, if I want to go to mainland, I will need to buy for like 15 to 17,000 naira now. With intracity fares now hiked, Private car owners say it is now cheaper to use public transport for their daily shuttles. You see the fuel matter. Firstly, I'm not running the AC with the fuel because the price of the fuel is too expensive. Number two, if I'm going to Ireland, most of the time I used to enter public bus because suddenly at the rate of 950, 100, 1000, it's too dead to buy. And if you buy it before you know the next, if you buy like 20,000 naira, can you imagine you cannot go to Aja and come back? So most of the vehicle we used to leave our vehicle in the house and join public buses. If I'm traveling from here to the east, from Lagos to maybe to Onitsha, I'll spend the fuel worth of almost uh, 70, 80,000 naira. So if I enter public transport, I'll spend just like 15 to 20,000 naira. So nowadays we prefer entering public transport than using a private car. So that fuel price is very, very affecting. It's very, very affecting. The government should look into it and see how they can come down to the price so that the individualities can use their private cars so that things can be easy for everyone. With the number of cars on the road now significantly reduced, as more people park their cars due to fuel cost, the pressure on commercial buses, taxis, and many buses in Lagos has been increased as many scrabble to get to their various destinations. How long will this continue? Only time can tell. And to labor matters. Teachers of the local education authority primary schools in the federal capital territory have resumed their suspended strike over non-payment of their minimum wage arrears and other entitlements by the six area council chairmen in the territory. Addressing newsmen at the end of the state wing executive council meeting held at Teachers House in Gwagwada late Tuesday, the chairman of the Nigeria Union of Teachers in the FCT, Abdullahi Muhammad Shafas, said the resumption of the strike was due to the non-response of the six area council chairman to the 14 days ultimatum issued to them. He said although the FCT minister, Nyesam Wike, had intervened by paying 40% of the total sum of the 25 months minimum wage arrears to the primary school teachers, the six area council chairman has refused to pay the remaining 60% of the 25 months minimum wage arrears as promised. He added that the six area council chairman has also failed to implement and pay the 25 and 35 percent salary increase of the teachers. Implementation and payment of 40 percent peculiar allowance as well as the payment of arrears to the wage, to the wage award of the teachers. 
According to him, the council chairman had also failed to correct and continue with the implementation of the template on the outstanding arrears of the teachers as agreed in 2022. The union, therefore, directed all the public primary schools in the FCT to remain closed, while parents are advised to remain guided by the development until the teachers, until the teachers' demands are met. And to other stories, Nigeria's business mogul Aminu Dantata has donated 1.5 billion naira to victims and survivors of Maiduguri flood that affected houses and displaced over a million people. Trustee Vis Beatrice Corusi has these and other condolence visits of dignitaries from other parts of the country. The report. The business mongol and his entourage paid a condolence visit to the governor of Burdo State following the recent flood that ravaged houses and displaced millions. Dan Tata lamented the economic challenges experienced in the country and called for prayers. Other politicians who visited the Meduguri government house included the former presidential aspirant of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, who donated 50 million naira to the state government. To state our business, this huge calamity, and in Nigeria, as a country, our witness this huge calamity, we know it's on your states and on your doors. We came here as Nigerians to condole you and sympathize and be able to find ways in which we can, as one citizen, one country, offer our own physical visits of sympathy and see ways in which we can be of that. Meanwhile, the Northeast Development Commission, NEDC, has paid a homage and condolence visit to the Shehu of Borno and made a similar donation of 50 million to the Emirates affected by the disaster. They extended their visit also to the Borno State Governor, where they announced relief funds of 3 billion naira for SMEs and palliatives to cushion the effects of the flood and also help in the rehabilitation of affected structures. The first part of the report dealt with how small businesses and SMC, MNCCs were affected because when you look at the geography of Borno say most of the people affected are the small businesses or people who uh, depend on self-help. After the review, the board approved that the sum of the three billion naira be released to the state government to be distributed to these SMECs and small businesses that were affected. Uh, we thank you very much for coming. Okay. And for the contributions that you have met. But most important to me, um, okay. what we need is the empathy. For the sympathy. It's the concern of the box, which is beyond the monetary issues. Walk around the camps. You cannot see a single person from the Northeast Development Commission, from the Department of Monetary and Affairs. Single person for the last 10 days. The governor appreciated the gestures of Nigerians and called for more support to address the plight of victims. Petro Skuruti, Trust TV News, Meiduguri. Surviving as a widow in Nigeria comes with challenges, especially in some parts of the country due to certain traditions that deprive women of homes, agricultural land and other assets, which limit the ability of widows to become economically secure, especially when there are children in the picture. This is the story of 40-year-old Gombe widow Habiba Abdullahi, who works as a domestic staff to take care of her 10 children. Despite having something to rely on, Habiba is not able to feed her children regularly, nor enroll them in school, let alone get a place to call home. Hassan Koli has more. Habiba and her eight children used to live in this house at Hayindogo community in Gwambi before it collapsed at the onset of the rainy season, which is about six months ago. 
rendering her homeless. This is in addition to the pain endured for over six years since the date of her husband as she had to take the responsibility of the children. I gave birth to 12 children, including twins, twice. Two have passed on while two were living in the ruins of our collapsed house here when I'm squatting with the other eight in our neighborhood. We were living here before it collapsed. Life has not been easy since my husband died six years ago. Now I am working as a housemaid to feed my children. I send some of them to work at rice mills for us to have a little food to eat. That is how we are managing now. Having been sheltered by one of her neighbors, Habiba wakes up every morning worrying about how to feed her children, provide them with a sound education, as well as how to rebuild her dilapidated house. My concern is to rebuild our house so that I can bring my children together again. Secondly, I am appealing to the public-spirited Nigerians to support us with food of any type to enable us survive the economic hardship. In the aspect of school, one private school proprietor to enroll two of my children while the elderly ones are struggling to sponsor themselves. For the others, I cannot enroll them due to my condition. As we are talking now, they are at a rice mills trying to gather what they can cook, and that depends on if they are lucky enough to get it. Our lives are pathetic and require urgent attention in this regard. I often hear that the government is distributing palliatives to the needy, but I have never received even a subject of detergent. Women groups says the government needs to re-strategize its ways of empowering women, saying they are receiving numerous hardship complaints from women on a daily basis, especially widows. There are a lot of complaints from women presently due to the economic condition of the country. Uh, these complaints from both married, single and even widow. We try our best to give widows the necessary support they needed to the best of our capacity. However, the government has to prioritize empowering women with skills and not food only or money. Because when you give them food, they will still come back tomorrow. Contrary to the skills that will sustain them forever. Habiba's story echoes the growing Eba challenge of most households living below the poverty line in Nigeria, especially widows and the need to come to their aid. From Gombe, Hassan Kohli, reporting for Trust TV. On the foreign scene, Mali's capital Bamako on Tuesday suffered a terrorist attack carried out by Al-Qaeda affiliate group JNIN. Citing the security official, AP reported that both the Falade Gendarme School and the military base near the Modibo Keita Sano airport were targeted later in the day. The situation was under control and the army chief of staff visited the camp where he vowed to fight division and Amalgam's General Umar Diara also called on the residents to provide information to the authorities that will aid them pick up suspects. Students were killed as well as soldiers. A statement read on national broadcaster ORTM1 said at least 15 suspects were arrested the JNI militant group released a video which it says shows fighters setting fire on a presidential plane and pavilion near the airport in Bamako. The army said that it was conducting a security sweep after fighting Afghan men. Still on the foreign scene, the intense now in sports. The intense rivalry between Africa's top table Tunis nations, Egypt and Nigeria, will be reignited at the 2024 ITTF African Championships. The championship will take place in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, from October 12 to 19, 2024, serving as qualifiers for the 2024 ITTF Mixed Team Cup in China and the 2025 World Championships in Qatar. The tournament will feature top teams and regional champions competing in two team events and five individual events. 
The events for both men and women's teams include men's singles, women's singles, men's doubles, women's doubles, and mixed doubles. And that wraps up the news update on Trust Television at this hour. Do not forget, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I'm Aisha Salihu for watching.